Welcome to the video tutorial of GreenCloud VPS. Today, we will show you how to install the LAMP stack on Ubuntu 20.04. First of all, log into your Linux VPS using the Bitviz SSH client. You will need to have an Ubuntu 20.04 server with a non-root sudo enabled user account and a basic firewall. As usual, it's good practice to update your system before installing any updates. Run the following command to update your system. Install Apache using Ubuntu's package manager. You'll need to adjust your firewall settings to allow HTTP traffic. UFW has different application profiles that you can leverage for accomplishing that. To list all currently available UFW application profiles, you can run. You'll see output like this. Apache, this profile opens only port 80. Apache full, this profile opens both port 80 and port 443. Apache secure, this profile opens only port 443. For now, it's best to allow only connections on port 80. To only allow traffic on port 80, use the Apache profile. You can verify the change with Traffic on port 80 is now allowed through the firewall. You can do a spot check right away to verify that everything went as planned by visiting your server's public IP address in your web browser. If you see this page, then your web server is now correctly installed and accessible through your firewall. Again, use app to acquire and install MySQL. When prompted, confirm installation by typing Y, and then enter. When the installation is finished, it's recommended that you run a security script that comes pre-installed with MySQL. This script will remove some insecure default settings and lock down access to your database system. Ensure that the server is running using the following command. Set password has no significance for user root apostrophe at localhost as the authentication method used doesn't store authentication data in the MySQL server. You need to change the authentication parameters to do so just run this command first. Then run this alter query to change the authentication parameters. And now, you are able to run the following command. This will ask if you want to configure the validate password plugin. If you answer yes, you'll be asked to select a level of password validation. Keep in mind that if you enter 2 for the strongest level, you will receive errors when attempting to set any password which does not contain numbers, upper and lowercase letters, and special characters, or which is based on common dictionary words. Regardless of whether you chose to set up the validate password plugin, your server will next ask you to select and confirm a password for the MySQL root user. If you enabled password validation, you'll be shown the password strength for the root password. You just entered and your server will ask if you want to continue with that password. If you are happy with your current password, enter Y for yes at the prompt. For the rest of the questions, press Y and hit the enter key at each prompt. This will remove some anonymous users in the test database, disable remote root logins, and load these new rules so that my SQL immediately respects the changes you have made. When you're finished, test if you're able to log in to the MySQL console by typing. To exit the MySQL console, type. Your MySQL server is now installed and secured. Next, we'll install PHP, the final component in the LAMP stack. To install these packages, run. Once the installation is finished, you can run the following command to confirm your PHP version. At this point, your LAMP stack is fully operational, but before you can test your setup with a PHP script, it's best to set up a proper Apache virtual host to hold your website's files and folders. We'll do that in the next step.
When using the Apache web server, you can create virtual hosts to encapsulate configuration details and host more than one domain from a single server. In this guide, we'll set up a domain called your domain, but you should replace this with your domain name. Create the directory for your domain as follows. Next, assign ownership of the directory with the user environment variable, which will reference your current system user. Then, open a new configuration file in Apache's site's available directory using your preferred command line editor. Here, we'll use nano. This will create a new blank file. Paste in the following barebones configuration. Save and close the file when you're done. If you're using nano, you can do that by pressing Ctrl X, then Y, and Enter. You can now use A2 Insight to enable the new virtual host. You might want to disable the default website that comes installed with Apache. This is required if you're not using a custom domain name because in this case, Apache's default configuration would overwrite your virtual host. To disable Apache's default website, type. Finally, reload Apache so these changes take effect. Your new website is now active, but the web root is still empty. Create an index.html file in that location so that we can test that the virtual host works as expected. Include the following content in this file. Now go to your browser and access your server's domain name or IP address once again. You'll see a page like this. If you see this page, it means your Apache virtual host is working as expected. In the next step, we'll create a PHP script to test that PHP is correctly installed and configured on your server. Now that you have a custom location to host your website's files and folders, we'll create a PHP test script to confirm that Apache can handle and process requests for PHP files. Create a new file named info.php inside your custom web root folder. This will open a blank file. Add the following text, which is a valid PHP code, inside the file. When you are finished, save and close the file. To test this script, go to your web browser and access your server's domain name or IP address, followed by the script name, which in this case is info.php. You'll see a page similar to this. After checking the relevant information about your PHP server through that page, it's best to remove the file you created as it contains sensitive information about your PHP environment and your Ubuntu server. You can use RM to do so. First, connect to the MySQL console using the root account. To create a new database, run the following command from your MySQL console. Now you can create a new user and grant them full privileges on the custom database you've just created. We need to give this user permission over the example database. Now exit the MySQL shell. You can test if the new user has the proper permissions by logging into the MySQL console again, this time using the custom user credentials. After logging into the MySQL console, confirm that you have access to the example database. This will give you the following output. Next, we'll create a test table named Toto List. From the MySQL console, run the following statement. Insert a few rows of content in the test table. You might want to repeat the next command a few times, using different values. To confirm that the data was successfully saved to your table, run. You'll see the following output. After confirming that you have valid data in your test table, you can exit the MySQL console. Now you can create the PHP script that will connect to MySQL and query for your content. Create a new PHP file in your custom web root directory using your preferred editor. We'll use nano for that. The following PHP script connects to the MySQL database and queries for the content of the to-do list table, exhibiting the results in a list. If there's a problem with the database connection, it will throw an exception. Copy this content into your to-do list.php script. Save and close the file when you're done editing. You can now access this page in your web browser by visiting the domain name or public IP address configured for your website. You should see a page like this, showing the content you've inserted in your test table.
That means your PHP environment is ready to connect and interact with your MySQL server. In this video, we've built a flexible foundation for serving PHP websites and applications to your visitors, using Apache as web server and MySQL as database system. Hopefully this video will be useful for you. Good luck!